a major locomotive for economic transformation and industrialization, and it's because it requires low level of capital for startup, it improves income redistribution, increases job creation and skills development, particularly for youth and women who make up the majority of the population. The benefits of micro, small and medium enterprises seem inexhaustible. It also sounds like a sure way to mop up unemployment in Nigeria. A good reason to focus on them on this episode of Big Story. Let's do this together. I'm Ini John Mekwa. <music> This enterprise has settled for maize as its raw material. Unfortunately, this raw material has to be imported into a country which boasts of being the largest producer of the crop in the continent. We source our corn from a distributor in Nigeria who is registered with the NAVDAC. For the local corn, um, I know there are lots of people that still use the local corn. I guess uh, because of what our company is looking out for, it's not giving us what we want. Um, and I feel that um, I think the moisture content in our local corn is too low. So it doesn't give us the pop volume that we require for our product. If the government can look at uh, the processing of our local corn, how it can be processed better, how it can be stored better, I think maybe from harvest state, I think, because it dries out too much. Um, the moisture is, and corn requires a, a particular level of moisture. I can't give you the exact figure for it to pop. So that is the challenge that we had with um, our local corn. A lot of people still use it, so I, I'm not really it out completely. I'm just saying because we are also peculiar about what we want to see in our company. So we decided that we rather not use it. Maize, one of the grains prominent in Nigeria, also known as corn, is one of the most popular food crops in Africa. It is cooked in various ways and millions of Africans rely on this crop because it usually costs less than wheat and rice and other common grains and cereals. The importance of this crop become even more prominent in the production of animal feeds. Unfortunately, the African continent produces about 6.5% of 785 million tons, which is the world production, and Nigeria is the largest producer in the continent, with South Africa holding the second place. Annually, Nigeria produces about 8 million tons of this food crop, according to the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture. It is very difficult because it is expensive and for small business like us that is a, it's a major issue for us. Our raw materials are actually very, very expensive but you know at the end of the day you still need to provide low um, cost product for people that are consuming this product. You want good, good quality product but um, at, at low cost so our margins are actually very small. This low margin has affected the number of staff employed. For a business which has been in operation for almost three years now, the staff strength should be more than five, but that is what the business can handle for now. In the MSME chain, one company's product is another one's raw material. That's the case here, where the packaged popcorn ends up in the store of a marketing company. Packaged products are received here from the manufacturers with the agreement that it should be distributed to supermarkets, retailers and even the open markets. Uh, one of the interests that we have is to support SMEs, small and medium enterprises. We have noticed that you know, in, the, in the production or the manufacturing um, chain, okay, the, the, a leg is missing, a leg in terms of uh, marketing and distribution. Distribution, I'm talking about sales. A lot of people, you know, you know, they manufacture and they do not have a clear process. They don't have a clear strategy of, of, of selling or distributing their products or selling or marketing their products. So this is the space where we want to fill, especially for small enterprises, small businesses. Okay, And ever since we came into this space, we've, we've gained traction, not just with the manufacturers, but also with the retailers in the, in, the, in the marketplace. And we do not just do this 
you know. We do it in a way that we cover all the channels. When I talk about channels, I'm talking about we supply to supermarkets, we supply to open markets, we supply to neighborhoods, we supply to tabletops. So we have everything it takes to do all of this seamlessly. Talking about why we also did, why we're also into this business is that I've also observed that there's a whole lot of people out there, you know, job creation is, is an issue. So we've decided to also fill that space to say, you know what, as of today, we have employed, we have, we have engaged in Bassage not less than about over 20 people. Every product is accommodated here. Even the staple gary made from cassava has been packaged and is distributed also. We source our gari from Ijebu. So what we do, we, we just source our gari from some factories and from cooperatives. So what we are doing, we are not processing gari ourselves. So we want to empower the local entrepreneur here. So we just source the gari and we bring it to a factory. Then we do small innovation. So we do, uh, we put uh, sugar, the best quality of sugar and milk and we package our gari. And then with the help of uh, our distributors uh, across Nigeria, we have a very good uh, distribution network with, uh, uh, with uh, 250 plus distributors across Nigeria. So we distribute our product through them. Of course, you know, the infrastructure in the uh, rural area is, you know, when we, when we have to transport our goods, you know, sometimes, you know, it takes time. Infrastructure is not the only deterring factor to the operations of MSMEs. Majority of micro-businesses started with less than 50,000 in initial startup cost. Only 4.7% start with more than 300,000. Personal savings is the most common source of capital. For SMEs who had access to bank credit, commercial banks were the main source of these funds. That's about 91.9%, while 4.7% access credit from microfinance institutions and 1% from development institutions. This um, startup pack, you know, it just is one thing to speak the grammar and then you don't give them any money to get started. Most businesses, most of their ideas are dying with them because of lack of finance. It's always the biggest challenge they have. Medan as an agency doesn't give uh, money, doesn't give loan. You know, that we help, we help them assess it by writing good business plans. Yeah, we submit them to banks and, and hold them until they get their money. We don't give loan. And we work with microfinance banks who their interest rates we make sure is one digit. Most of them, even they, you give them money, they misuse it. We are also into monitoring government projects, programs, you know. There's one during Jonathan time called the UWI. We monitored it and we saw the last six, we saw how most youth were receiving the money. It was a grant of 10 million. Some got it and went and started, you know, buying cars, marrying wives and all that. So they don't really know how to tailor their resources. In um, 1993, Highly experienced and respected for building a business from scratch to an enviable status, the founder of the Chair Center Group, Mrs. Ibukwa Woshika, has had to deal with being rejected by banks when asking for loans, up to a level when banks offer her business. Mrs. Awoshika gladly speaks with business operators on what to consider when choosing a source of funding. If you have a long-term product line, you can't take long-term money. That's a debt trap. If you have money, you have to start paying in six months. And you know that by six months, you will have harvested your crop. You have the wrong financing. So it doesn't matter who is offering it to you. You need to say no. Because it's not going, you're not going to survive. You're going to run into debt. Not because you don't have a good business. Or you don't know what you're doing. But you have mismatched the money. It's like when you take, um, what do they call it? Overdraft. To buy a machine. You're insane. You're going to run into trouble. Overdraft is what? 30 days? At the most, 90 days. And if you buy a machine, 
In my industry, most of my machines are 10 to 20 years lifespan. So why am I going to do that? Doesn't make any sense. It's either I build equity from the profit of the business to buy the machines, or I lease the machine from companies who fund machinery lease, or I go after like a BOI because I can get five, seven year money to support the purchase of the machines. And that allows me longer time in order to pay back. So your biggest takeaway from financing a business, you cannot mismatch. I know it's a microwave age, but business isn't like that. Especially when you have a need. When you have a need, your provider is king. You patiently follow them until you get what you want. Never lose sight of where you're going. Have the patience. You cannot build a business except you're patient, you have perseverance, you have tenacity, and you're focused. Because those things help you to stay fit. The other thing is, learn the discipline of not consuming your capital or your profits. People spend the profit before it comes in. And as they make it, they want everybody to know they've just made some money. They buy a car, rent a new office, have a party, go travel when they don't need to. Let me tell you the truth. I didn't buy a car for four years. When I bought my first car in business, I bought a used car. When I bought my second car, I bought a used car. By the time I had my first brand new car, I built the house of his glory, and I already had a turnover that was way over 150 million there. This is the truth. MSMEs are the bedrock of Nigeria's industrialization and inclusive economic development and the most important component of industrialization as set out in the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan. This quote by the Vice President, Professor Yemi Shibajo, resonates with Nigerians who have for decades embraced the path of creating jobs for themselves. Which is why the National Bureau of Statistics, in its latest survey conducted in all 36 states of the Federation, including the Federal Capital Territory, discovered about 41.5 million enterprises in existence. 99.8% of this number, which is over 41 million, are micro-businesses, that is enterprises that have employed less than 10 people and own assets worth less than 5 million naira. Next in size is small businesses, numbering a little over 71,000. Medium-sized companies are about 1,700. Together, the MSMEs generated almost 60 million jobs as at December 2017. 5% of those jobs were created by SMEs and 95% created by micro-businesses. Following the figures, it would be natural to pay very good attention to the micro-enterprises because being 99% of MSMEs, it certainly drives the trend for the entire category. In Nigeria, a large majority of micro-businesses are sole proprietorship, operated by individuals within the 26 to 50 age bracket. This is easily explained by its required level of capital and use of raw materials which are easily accessible. Most micro-enterprises are wholesale or retail trade, agriculture and other services like beauty businesses which make up 76.3 of micro-enterprises. Sectors requiring high numbers of employers or skilled labors like education, human health and social work, information and communication have very low numbers of micro-enterprises. Ethical and effective leadership by the governing body of an enterprise can expand a micro to a small, then medium, and then a large corporation. This is what corporate governance is about. However, it seems to be the Achilles heel of many enterprises in the country. It is you and you alone. It's you and your wife alone, uh, and whatever. So it, it, it limits your ability to access capital. And so if, there is, if we want to unlock uh, the access to capital for small businesses, from day one, they need to think about themselves as a big organization. And one key factor is governance. 
So I will say to myself, yes, I'm the founder, yes, I'm the CEO, but you know we're going to have shared responsibilities. I'm not just going to take the checkbook and sign money out because somebody wanted. No, the business is going to be our focus. Everybody will earn what they deserve. And from what you have earned, you can spend it as you like. The business must have an identity of their own. Those are the things that we are seeing for small businesses that have grown significantly. And we're going to show them that that is the only way to go. If you want to remain small, no problem. You can continue to do as everybody used to do. But if from day one, your interest is that you want that business to outlive you, then you have to put the right uh, building blocks there. It's like somebody wanting to build a 10-story building. That foundation is very key. And what we are saying is that governance is at the heart of that foundation. Corporate governance is scalable. You can adapt it to the size of the business now and then look to um, raise that business to the next level. One is accountability, which interestingly is a principle of corporate governance. It means accountable to yourself, first of all, and then of course to your stakeholders, i.e. your shareholders, your customers, and all of that. Another is succession, which again, you know, I'm trying to tie everything down to corporate governance, succession. You know, where will this business be uh, when you're no longer there? Either because you plan your exit or for an unplanned exit. I mean, anything can happen at any time. And if your customers are not properly taken care of in the scheme of things, it means that if you're no longer there, that business just, uh, just dies off. But some of these terms with its benefits seem unreachable to the majority of the micro-businesses whose operators are likely to be found in the rural areas, even though situated in states with urban status. I think this is a collective role of society. We all have a role to do what is called capacity building. Now the capacity of a small business owner or a micro business owner, they need the basics of bookkeeping, they need the basics of inventory management, and this is already being done through societies. They have corporate corporations, they have cooperatives, they have societies, they have church uh, or mosque uh, you know, uh, societies, and this is where we can actually try and invite those skill sets. Um, also building marketplaces, I think the likes of uh, EDC can bring it down to the, the village level and help them out. But we have a role, both as corporates and as industry and as uh, corporations like the EDC to be able to help with capacity building. And you can see we're all at different stages, but we really need to be able to provide those skill sets for them to access funding. Funding is a major challenge and with new developmental banks coming on board, we have uh, the Development Bank of Nigeria, the Bank of Industry, there are banks that are actually made and agriculture, there's a lot going into that space. Central Bank is working on, on quite a few. We are already working in various spheres as the EDC, as LBS, to be able to change that narrative. Well, empower people with knowledge, close the gap on access to finance or capital and then keep that sustainability going in terms of quality outcomes and things like that. The distance between the rural area and also the urban area, I know it's, it's, it's quite far, but the most important thing is gradually they are getting to know what is going on, they know what is going on, because at the end of the day, anybody that is doing anything that is basic, they still go back to the rural areas and they also sort of have com com conversations with them on a regular basis and with time, we will have to make sure that anything we talk about SME, anything we talk about governors, anything we talk about small businesses, we still have to cascade it down and tell the people because the people that are in those rural areas are the ones that will grow the SMEs and as we continually proceed in terms of letting them know what the basic things are, are required. Now the SMEs also have to understand that there's a price you pay for you to be able to afford these things. So essentially it has to be a symbiotic kind of relationship parties must come together, you must look at it that they are startups, and you must also look at it that gradually they will grow and then they will be a formidable team. So like I said, cost you must bring down. Even government also has to bring taxes down for SMEs. They must also bring finance in terms of finance cost. Everybody talks about BOI, everybody talks about all of these things, but the question is how is it accessible? These guys don't have collateral. So in terms of cost, you have to make sure that they are everything is attractive for them so that they can enforce what they need to do and also they can practice what they believe. So essentially, cost is an issue and we must bring down that cost. It must be a deliberate effort by government to bring down that cost. And when those in the rural areas upgrade to the urban, the issue of tax seems to always come up and for many years now, operators have complained of multiple taxation. I think about when we were three years old, we had a very serious issue as regards taxation, um, because you know in Lagos State you pay 
LRS, you pay FRS, and then the local government is coming with one bill, and you're wondering, what am I selling for crying out loud? That I have to pay this multiple tax on this, and they don't want to care whether your business is doing well or not. And so we're slammed that year that I had to go to, you know, FRS office myself with all my documents, with even all the documents we use in purchasing, just to be able to see that how can I be owing you 60 million? What business have I done? What is my profit margins? So really, that's another, but right now, we've been able to sort out, we are not, we pay our taxes, we pay everything, both legal state, both, you know, we don't have problems with it. But I imagine when people were just coming up in businesses, if they were not able to manage the situation or handle it the way, maybe that business would have even gone down by now because of the multiple taxation. So I think that maybe that should be tax relief to businesses and then, you know, maybe they should create a, a platform to say, okay, if, you are, if your profit margins or your turnover is within this rate, you pay this rate, Different, different rates should be given to different categories of business so that it could uh, you know, encourage businesses to grow in Nigeria because tax is really another major issue affecting small and medium you know, businesses in Nigeria. One of the things that we find is that um, when you support businesses to grow um, and then you, you have a little bit less of those kind of complaints. So one of the things that we're doing at uh, LSCTF is to tackle unemployment. And one of the things we do is to provide access to finance for MSMEs. Um, till date, we've supported over uh, 12,300 um, MSMEs in Lagos um, with over 7 billionaires. Now, one of the reasons why we do that is to um, support um, these businesses um, grow and then, of course, mo but most importantly, um, to get our youth employed. So again, one of the other barriers um, that we find to uh, entrepreneurs accessing finance is this issue of collateral. And so we took that away and we asked that they provide us with guarantors. And we have different uh, loan categories at the micro level and at the SME level, just to make sure that we are able to accommodate as many people as possible. So who qualifies for the loan? You're a resident of Lagos State, and your business is located in Lagos State, you automatically qualify. And you're above 18 years old, then you automatically qualify. So we are sector agnostic, which means that it doesn't matter what, um, what sector that your business is operating in, we will support uh, your business. And so I think that we are doing and we're setting the, the pace, um, see how as much as possible and we can lower those barriers so that we can get more people into the bucket. Industrial diversification is a national benefit when MSMEs are allowed to flourish. So the areas of need still needs to be attended to. But of course, it's not just for the government. Operators would have to also take up their roles seriously. Well, that's our story. Any suggestion on how the growth of MSMEs can be accelerated, please share with us and watch Big Story on channel's YouTube channel anytime at all. That's it for now. I'm Ini John Mekwa.